Do you plan on buying BMW X5 E70? Can it still stand out from the crowd in 2023? And what it worth to own it? And the most important question, should you even consider to getting one? And if yes, then which model and the engine is the best? Today I'll answer those questions and get you the brief history of this generation. As for why should you listen to me? I think this short sequence will get you the answers about my knowledge and skills. My first ever BMW was 2007 BMW X5 4.8 V8. And for the past six years, I own three BMW X5s. And beside that, I own over a dozen BMWs and every single of them I fix it myself. From the most affordable and favorite among BMW enthusiasts E92 335, to iconic natural aspirated power generator E93 M3 with S65 engine. To whatever it is, no comments. To a 2008 BMW X5 E70 with an N52 engine, which served me great. After that one, I got nimble as f 2009 BMW Z4 S Drive 35i. What a name, love it or hate it. And the latest BMW that I own was a BMW X5 4.8 V8 with 140,000 miles that I purchased back in November 2022 for 3,600. If from 2007 year of manufacture, the price is great, but everything else is not so. We'll talk about that one in a different video. I'll be restoring that on a tight budget. So before getting into the main topic, let's get into brief history for better understanding of the concept. Since the E70 is the second generation of BMW X5, and in my opinion, the car still looks compelling. So let's get to it. The first ever BMW X5 was introduced in 1999 as the brand's first sport activity vehicle, which is SAV. The E53 X5 was designed by Frank Stephenson and featured a stylish and muscular design, combined the characteristic of luxury sedan with the versatility of SUV. It was built on the BMW E39 5 Series platform and shared some components with the 5 and 7 Series models, as well as the Range Rover L322. In 2004, a facelift was introduced, bringing minor exterior and interior updates among with the improved engine options. The first generation BMW X5 was praised for its driving dynamic, luxury features and some off-road capabilities. The X5 concept came from BMW purchasing Range Rover back in 1994 and the model that was directly used to build the first ever BMW X5 is Range Rover L322 and it turns out to be highly advantageous during the creation of the X5. By gaining access to the Range Rover's technology and components, BMW engineers were able to incorporate features like hill distance control, the off-road engine management system, as well as entire in-car infotainment system, radio functionality, navigation system, television, telecommunication system, and so on. Overall, the BMW did good, but not as good as the Range Rover. The off-road capabilities were there, but not as much as in the Rover. Worth to mention one more time that BMW explicitly called the E53 SAV a sport activity vehicle instead of SUV. Another proof of that is the power delivery. Despite the X5 is all-wheel drive vehicle, uh, the engine torque was distributed 62% to the rear wheels, making it feel as close as possible to the company's rear-wheel drive sedan. Beside that, the BMW E53 was pretty popular and it ended up selling 249,000 units of the E53 model in 70 years. And that number made it highly successful. Although the E70 from 2007 to 2013 were approximately 616,000 units in sales. Simply car sales went through the roof for the last decade and demand on cars increased drastically since then. In September 2006, the BMW X5 E53 was discontinued and it got replaced with BMW X5 E70 SUV. The second generation of the BMW X5 known as the E70 made its debut in 2006 for 2007 model year. It featured a more modern and refined design with larger kidney grills and slicker lines compared to its predecessor. The E70 X5 was built on an updated platform providing improved handling and more comfortable ride. It offered a wide range of engine options including more powerful and fuel efficient choices. In April 2009, BMW introduced a performance-oriented variant 
known as X5M, powered by twin-turbo V8 engine, offering exceptional performance for an SUV. In 2011, E70 X5 received a facelift known as the LCI, featuring restyled front and rear bumper, updated interior features and new engine choices. The E70 remained popular for its blend of luxury, performance and practicality. Both generations of the BMW X5 played a significant role in establishing the brand's present in the luxury SUV market. And the model continued to evolve with the subsequent generation to maintain its status as popular choice among luxury SUV buyers. The X5 E70 concept is one of my favorite and still is. It has a futuristic design, to some extent great performance, um, functional to media and more. But the G05 that is manufactured from 2019 to present is given no chance to E70. It used to be compatible to F15. Yes, it was noticeable which car is newer, but for some reason the newer generation wasn't that interesting, or at least in my opinion. With that out of the way, let's start with the engine options and do the breakdown of common issues and the price for the repairs. There are five most common engines that are mainly available in the US. I'm not going to be fully covering the European models, but rather briefly call them up and do short breakdown and point on major problems. The first one is N52B30 and the least powerful one. It was installed on the E70 from 2007 till 2010. It has 268 horsepower and in my opinion in one of the best engines for BMW in those years. 2009 to 2010 had few revisions and updated badges. Speaking of the badge, the BMW changed the engine badge for all of the cars starting in, from 2009. Yes, this engine is not that powerful, but it might be why it's so reliable. But of course, in comparison to other engines, uh, it's more but not less a safe option. Unfortunately, it has the same problem with oil leaks, uh, lifter noise, which only applies to 2006 and 2008 models, also the older engines um, as well, electric water pump failure. Actually, this one is applied to most engines of that generation. Another common issue is intake manifold runner. It also had a problem till 2000. Eight, I think after their revision and for major issue this basically stops here which is not that bad as you will see in comparison to other engines. The next engine is the great for some people but not for other and it's N55B30 or X-Drive 35i. It was installed on E70 from 2011 till 2013 and it has 315 horsepower. It was installed pretty much in every BMW back in the days and it still is. It currently produced and installed in 2023 models and 2024 models. The predecessor is an N54 which is twin turbo inline six engine. The N55 is a single turbo with pretty much the same engine block but in that case it was detuned. As a fact, it's not as tunable as N54, but it's a bit more reliable in some spec, but not by much. The problems are relevant to the N54. Despite the N55 being a newer engine, the common issues are pretty much the same as direct injectors or piezo injectors, high pressure fuel pump, boost leak, vanilla solenoid failure, and multiple oil leaks. The next one is 2007 till 2008 N62B48 4.0 V8. In 2009 and 2010 X-Drive 48i and it was producing 362 horsepower and it's also a total mess. The N62 known for how expensive it is to repair and for how cheap you can get one. It's not like the engine is that bad. Actually, it is. Valve steam seals, alternator bracket oil leaks, gasket, variety of other oil leaks, coolant transfer pipe leak, premature transmission wear mainly due to not replacing the transmission oil, valve cover, valve cover gasket oil leaks, oil filter housing gasket oil leak. It doesn't sound much but all of those issues are starting from thousand dollars to fix and the most expensive is valve steam seals 
which can run from three to four thousand dollars it also depends on the shop you're going to be doing and the technology that the shop is going to be using and if any of those issues wasn't addressed before you purchase the car they will pop out soon let's get to the next one 2010 to 2013 s63 b44 547 horsepower and yes of course it's an amp performance model v8 twin turbo hot v pretty much same N63 but tuned and with more sensors and electronic components and then more power. The hot V design is where the turbo is sitting on top of the engine and in between of the cylinder head which makes it extremely hot as a side effect all the plastic and rubber components getting wasted relatively fast. And that should be enough since this is the holy category as well as the price. The next and the last gasoline engine that was installed on the E70 from 2011 till 2013 it's N63. The same as the S63 but N63 which is not as powerful. N63 B44 it has 402 horsepower X-Drive 50i Common issues is timing chain stretching and eventually slipping. Although this issue is not as bad as on some other engines, usually the car will throw a timing issue code or you get in the limp mode so you have room to take an action and not to send the car to the junkyard. From the upside, the engine was combined with a new 8-speed automatic transmission. To be exact, all models or previous models was equipped with 6-speed automatic transmission. The new 8-speed uh, transmission was installed in um, xDrive 50i and xDrive 35i and I think that's it. Um, and I think they were installed in 2011, correct me if I'm wrong here. But beside that, nothing crazy and I don't think we need to go over the um, N63 since they have quite a few issues with the turbos um, because it's a twin turbo and it's the same hot V as S63 so they're kind of I don't know I don't know what to say it's it's kind of at this point it's not relative but they still being produced those engines so if you know or want to experience with it uh, you're welcome let's get to the diesel engine this section will be pretty short and like i said i'll briefly go through the common issue of those engines first on the list is 2007 to 2010 m57 tu2d30 it's overall reliable or the most interesting among the rest variants of diesel engines that BMW has. The main issue here are related to intake manifold, NOx sensor, harmonic balancer, EGR system, heavy carbon buildup, gold plaques, turbo oil line leaks and a few more minor ones. The next one is 2009 to 2013 M57Y. Twin turbo was made for export or the US market and it's backed as xDrive 35D. Pretty much as good as the previous model or even better since it has a few revisions and few upgrades. M57Y was delivering roughly 280 horsepower whereas M57 was delivering 232 horsepower which is mainly was um, installed on the E70 in Europe. Then the next one is N57. There was three models of the N57. D3000, 242 horsepower. N57 D30TOB turbo, 302 horsepower. And N57S, three turbo, 376 horsepower. Those are very interesting engines, but they had one major issue. It would keep me away from buying one of those, although we're not really having many of those in US, um, they mainly were built for, for Europe, but this problem is a timing chain. For some people that might be no problem, but I usually try to stay away from a uh, particular problem. For the same reason, I will stay away from the BMW N20 engines, as well as uh, Mercedes four-cylinder, I think it's called M271, correct me if I'm wrong here as well, those engines usually chewing through the time chaining gears as the butter goes through the knife. So, I don't know. I mean, that's what I heard. I never experienced. Might be in the future. Most likely not. 
Also, instead of repeating myself in every engine and chassis option, I will add common problems to this section. So this section will cover pretty much every or all of the engines and the E70 body in general. The differentials, transfer case, same as the transmission oil. This issue is more common with more powerful engine, but it also known issue for less powerful engine. The differential and transmission oil have a huge impact on components uh, wear and tear. Make sure to replace it once you purchase the car. BMW claims that the fluid that they put in the transmission transfer case and differentials are lifetime. But the funny thing is that the lifetime is only applies for the time of manufacturing warranty, which is usually from 30 to 50,000 miles or five years. So make sure to replace transfer case, differential and transmission oil at least in 50,000 miles to be safe in that. It also depends on how heavy you are on a throttle, where you're taking your car, maybe you're driving some off-road, even if it's not something crazy, those transfer, transfer case tend to have a quite tear and wear if they extensively get in under the load. One more thing that you should keep in mind that they all have one major issue, which is faulty electric modules. So let's get briefly through this section since it's pretty crucial in buying a new BMW X5 E70 or not new, old, but second generation, let's say. There are four generation if you didn't know. There are E70 or E53, E70, F15 and um, G05, which is the latest one. The electric issues and the problems applies only to the older cars or specifically for the E70, it's gonna be 2006, 2007 and 2008 year of manufacturing as well as entire first generation, uh, the BMW X5 E53 and uh, some other models, uh, other lineup models, including the 3, 5 and 7 series. Also, all of those cars have the same years uh, or till 2008, they would have the same uh, problems with variety of modules and NFRM, with lights, windows regulators and coating, um, internal damage and so on and so on. Although the cars after 2008 was much better in that regard. Since BMW did a major revision and changed most all of the failed units, not only in X5 lineup, but in other models as well. You still can get some of those issues in newer cars, but rather rare than common. As for 2006, 7 and 8 models, they have really high chance of uh, electric failure. Some of them can be fixed with ISTA by simply doing a hard reset. The other need a new module because of the internal element failure or some sort of. And it's not the one you want to buy. Or other way to say is to avoid uh, those years of manufacturing, which is repeating myself again, 2006, seven and eight. Those are the worst. They're no matter what engine you get, but more likely how many modules the car has. So in conclusion, we'll start from one that I will not recommend. As I mentioned already, I own three BMW X5 and all of them was restored, fixed, coated, and eventually sold. Two of them was 2007 4.8 V8 and one uh, was the 2008 3.0 OSI. Those are a pretty good example as they practically show me how much money and time I spend for each of the car to make it ready to drive or uh, to make a profit on them if I restore them. The one that have the most power and the biggest engine, the N62, which is 4.8 V8, generally speaking, it should be reliable, naturally aspirated V8, 362 horsepower. But unfortunately, with all of those issues that we talk about already, this engine is the red flag. It can be good if everything that could go wrong was replaced and all of the oil leaks was fixed, but it seems like a story from the fairy tale. On the other hand, both of the inline six gasoline engines are great options, um, or it depends on the people. The N55 uh, is more toward being a little more picky. It's one of the newest engines for E70. It's turbocharged, delivering good power which is 315 horsepower where the N52 is a sweet spot for those who want a BMW but don't want to do any work or major work on those cars 
exception is gonna be maintenance. I own this car for two years, the 2008 BMW X5 E70 with N52 engine, and it was fabulous. Um, I had few problems. I have restoration video on the channel, so make sure to check this out. But I think among the BMW community and BMW X5 community especially, uh, the N52 engine remains a baseline for the BMW and you will not go wrong if you're gonna choose it since it doesn't have turbos, it's not like overproducing the power, um, it's great on the gas mileage um, and in general it's reliable uh, for only few downsides as a uh, electric water pump and transfer case. But with that you got to keep in mind that the only 2009 and 2010 model had the sweet spot or at least for the E70 with N52 engine. In 2010 the N52 engine was discontinued and it was replaced with N55 um, which came to E70 as well. As for the N63 engine it's quite a gimmick. It's I would say turbo in combination with the hot V design and um, having time and chain issue it's not the best option for me in general. Although those engines are pretty interesting since they really powerful 400 horsepower for that car is uh, great power but if you want something really sporty just go for something smaller. The last piece of advice is do the PPI always do the PPI or at least bring your mechanic or your friend who more or less um, knowledgeable in cars. Either print the list every single option that you wanted to check in the car and make sure you do great research about the com common issues. Um, as for the E70 in general, uh, make sure the transmission shifting okay, make sure the transfer case working okay, which is going to be reflecting on a transmission when it's going to be shifting, you're going to be feeling it's something off a little. Make sure to do a longer drive to feel the suspension, to feel how it doesn't have any sound, doesn't have any clicking or so on. And as well as try to get the car uh, start on cold uh, because usually um, the issues with the engine most noticeable when the engine is cold or in the morning when it wasn't started yet and those are my advice with that I hope you did like the video you learned something for yourself and hope you put that like button there and subscribe on the channel because we'll be doing more and more of that stuff in any case I'll see you in the next one